We know that operating in the realm of personal relationships can be incredibly difficult, especially if we find ourselves stepping into a situation where there is a really high level of tension. Someone might have been disappointed, seething with anger and just on the brink of acting wrongly and, and we're at a loss to know what to say. Well, there was a situation right at the beginning of time when that was actually the case. Cain and Abel had brought their offerings to God and God had accepted Abel's offering but hadn't accepted Cain's. And Cain was furious with Abel and, and was seething with anger and, and, and was plotting already in his head all kinds of vengeful things even though in many ways Abel was just totally innocent. He did what he did and Cain did what he did and, and God responded. But I'm so glad that I wasn't having to intervene there and that we can see how God speaks into the situation and he speaks into the situation with incredible grace. We read in verse 7 of Genesis 4, if you do what is right, will you not be accepted? But if you do not do what is right, sin is crouching at your door. It desires to have you, but you must overrule it. Now, that is incredible because the one thing that Cain really needed was to discover the route to acceptance. He, he just discovered the route to rejection. <laughs> you know, he hadn't brought his offering in faith, we're told in Hebrews 11. And so not bringing it in faith meant that God couldn't receive it, no matter how good it was. It was not going to be received if it wasn't offered in faith. He just didn't believe God would want it. And so there was no faith in his offering. But God is still saying to him, look, just do the right thing and, and you'll be accepted. In this moment when you're seething with anger and you could get it so wrong, just do the right thing and you will be accepted. You can continue to live in my presence. He says that if you don't do the right thing, sin is crouching at your door. It's like something that's about to leap and spring at you. But right at this moment, it's just crouching at the door and you must rule over it. So at this particular point, while sin is crouching at the door, see it like, you know, a lion that's about to spring or something like that and, and take the authority and say, stay where you are. You're not going to get me. But of course, we know what happened was that Cain didn't take that advice. He allowed the sin to, uh, to spring up and overwhelm him. And, and we know the tragedy that, that happened in the life of Abel. And we know that Cain walked out from the presence of God. And it could have been so different. This was a, a second chance that God was bringing into the situation. If you want to know how to be accepted, just do the right thing. But if you don't do the right thing, it's going to leave sin crouching at your door. Now, you can still overrule it. You can still step in and rule over it. But you must take that authority because otherwise it's going to leap in and destroy everything. Now, we've moved a long way since Cain and Abel, but the principles are still there. The Bible tells us that no temptation has overtaken us that is not common to man, and that with the temptation, God provides the way of escape. Yes, we may be seething, we may need to calm down, but we can still discover the acceptance of God if we take that authority over those temptations that come and say, no, I'm not going to be overwhelmed by you. You want to rule over me, but I will rule over it and see that change. It's going to take the grace of God. But that's what it means when it says, with every temptation, there comes the way out. And the way out is to lean on the Lord and to know his grace and his goodness. I'm so glad that God intervened all that time ago. And I'm so sad that Cain didn't take up that second opportunity. But we don't need to be like Cain. We can discover the acceptance of the Lord as we take that authority and ensure that we're not overwhelmed by the sin that's crouching at the door.